Just look at that magnificent beast. A true marvel of gaming's fifth generation. Released in late 93, the Panasonic 3DO debuted for 700 bucks, famously setting the bar for high price points. A short while later, the company dramatically slashed the price of the system down to 500 bucks, a 29% cut. That's massive, and surely the most substantial price cut in game console history, right? Well, not so fast. In this video, I'm going to explore system price cuts that occurred over the last 30 years in the United States. For each generation of gaming, from the Genesis to the PlayStation 4, I want to know who blinked first and who blinked biggest. And when we combine these two questions, what were the most substantial price cuts in history? After going generation by generation, I'm going to rank all 18 of these consoles against one another to determine which one did in fact have the most substantial price cut from the last 30 years. If it wasn't the 3DO, then who was it? In order to compare console price cuts, I'm going to look at two key metrics. How long did it take for a company to blink, as in cut their console's price for the first time? And once it did, how big was that blink? How much was the price cut? And we can combine these two metrics to get one number that measures just how substantial an individual cut was relative to other systems price cuts. For example, let's go back to the 3DO. It took the company just 179 days to take action and slash the price, to blink. And once they did, the size of that cut was 29%, or $200. Now in order to put all the consoles on a comparable scale, I'm going to take the percentage size of the cut and divide by the number of days that it took to get to that cut, giving us, in effect, a daily cut rate percentage that we can compare across systems. Obviously, the bigger that number is, the more aggressive the cut was, in terms of both time and size. So for the 3DO, we take the 29% and divide it by 179 days to give us a daily cut rate of 0.16%. That's the number that we can compare systems by. And one more word before we move on. I'm only going to be looking at initial price cuts. Some systems would go on to have two, three, four, five price cuts, going to the point where they were almost giving the system away in the end. But in this analysis, I'm only interested in that all-important primary cut. First, let's get started by looking at the averages across all 18 systems in this analysis. The average time until the first price cut for a console in this analysis was 399 days. So for anybody that's been telling their friends and family, Hey, just wait a year. It'll come down in price. Well, you were just about right. And the average price cut for that first drop was 25%, a sizable amount. Let's move on to the fourth generation and work our way through time. Major systems from this generation included the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, and the TurboGrafx-16. And this generation perfectly illustrates why I had to combine the two measures of price cut timing and size. Because the Genesis and the TurboGrafx both came out a full two years ahead of the Super Nintendo in the United States. So of course it's not going to make much sense to say that one of these systems blinked before the Super Nintendo when you have such a skewed timeline. In any event, when we combine timing and size of cut, who had the most substantial price cut in this generation? Can you guess? It was the TurboGrafx-16. It took 641 days for the price cut to come, but when it did, it was a full 50% cut, double the average, and taking the system from $200 down to $100. That's a daily percent cut rate of 0.078%, the biggest of the fourth generation. The Super Nintendo is the next most substantial, with a cut coming just 145 days after the system's release. Highly indicative of the competition existing between Nintendo and Sega at the time. But the cut itself was of modest size, at just 10%, taking the system's price from 200 down to 180. As for the Genesis, that system's first cut came 656 days after the system's release, and it was a 21% cut, shifting the price from 189 down to 149. Speaking strictly in real time, the Genesis cut actually came a little ahead of the Super Nintendo's release, clearly a strategic cut. Comparatively, the Super Nintendo had a daily percent cut rate of 0.069, more than double the 0.032 rate for the Genesis. To sum up the fourth generation, the average price cut came 481 days after a system's release. 
and the average size of a cut was 27%, meaning the average daily cut rate was 0.06%. As we move forward, we'll be able to compare the generations here. You'll see just how competitive some generations were relative to others. The fifth generation of game systems, my favorite. It was a time when the competition was fierce and numerous. Five major systems were fighting for ground during this time. What's not to love here? The 3DO, the Jag, the PS1, the Saturn, and the Nintendo 64. But who ended up with the most substantial price cut here? Was it indeed the 3DO? Let's look. I consider this surprise number one in this analysis. It was the Saturn, not the 3DO. The Saturn's first price cut came just 144 days after release, lightning fast, the fastest of any cut in this analysis, and dropped the price by a significant 25%, going from 400 down to 300 bucks. This represents a 0.175 daily cut rate as compared to the 3DO's cut rate of 0.16% with these numbers here. Close, yeah but the Saturn does take it, in a bad way. After the Saturn and the 3DO, the next on the list for the fifth generation is the Nintendo 64, with a very fast price cut of 25%, going from 200 down to 150 in just 169 days. This strikes me as particularly aggressive, seeing as how $200 was a low initial price point to begin with. The PlayStation 1 comes next with a big 33% cut, coming 250 days after release, and taking the price from $300 down to 200 bucks. Sony is the king now, but back then it was scraping and doing whatever it could to get a foothold, just like everybody else. I told you, this was a crazy time. But to me, this is the craziest. The Jag, a system that was desperate from the beginning, but yet it took a full 616 days before its first price cut. But when it did finally cut, it was a desperate one, at 40% taking the price from 250 down to 150. That doesn't come across as strategic, just panicked, like an overcorrection when you nearly fall asleep at the wheel and jolt awake with a big tug on the steering wheel. Before we move on, do you notice anything noteworthy about the fifth generation? Besides the Jag, all of the cuts came much faster than the console average, and all of them are equal to or greater than the size of the average cut. It was truly a wild time. Let's look at the overall numbers here. In the fifth generation, the average time to the first cut was just 272 days, and was 31% on average when it hit, giving an average daily cut rate of 0.11%. These are far more aggressive numbers than the prior generation, and really give an insight into just how ferocious things were in the mid-90s. It was real cutthroat stuff. Now things do quiet down a little here as we move into the new millennium, but there's still a lot of activity. The PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, GameCube, the original Xbox, all heavy hitters. But can you guess who had the most substantial cut? Here's a hint, it's not who you might be thinking. Did you think it would be the Dreamcast? Because I certainly did. But it was Microsoft's turn to blink big, the newcomer with the first cut coming just 181 days after release, and being quite big at 33%, taking the price down from 300 to 200. Like the PlayStation last generation, this strikes me as strategic. Microsoft was new to the game and couldn't risk losing on price. They had to get established, and as we now know, they damn well did. Next up, still not the Dreamcast. The GameCube has the next most substantial cut of this generation, with a 26% cut coming just 184 days after release. Then of course we do have the Dreamcast, which nearly ends up hitting both of the overall averages. A 25% cut, taking the price from 200 down to 150, and coming nearly a year after its release. And that might seem strange, as if Sega should have cut the price sooner. But apparently Sega of Japan was already very upset at what they consider to be a too low $199 price point in the USA. So upset that it allegedly contributed to their firing the American president shortly before the American release. So they were in no rush to cut the price on the Dreamcast. And finally for this generation, the PlayStation 2 takes a long 565 days to cut the price 33% from 300 down to 200, and probably scaring the hell out of the competition. Although that cut took a long time, it's not even close to the longest in this analysis, as we shall soon see. 
So while not quite as uber aggressive as the fifth generation, this generation still puts up some aggressive averages, with the average cut coming 322 days after a system's release and being quite steep at 29%, giving this generation an average daily percent cut rate of 0.09%. Moving into Generation 7, things settle even more and we're down to just three big players in the industry. Care to venture a guess as to who had the most substantial cut here? Here's a hint. One of these systems had the longest duration to the first cut of any system in this analysis. You probably saw this coming. It was Sony's turn to blink big. A relatively quick cut, 234 days after the PlayStation 3's release, dropped the price 17% from 600 down to 500. The next biggest was the 360, which came a very long time after release, 624 days, and only dropped 13%, taking the system's price from 400 down to 350. Microsoft had definitely cleared the runway by this point as a major video game company, and they probably cleared the trees too. And then the Wii. A system that took an eternity to drop in price, over 1,000 days, and still only dropping 20%, taking the system from 250 down to 200. And just to give you an idea of how long this took, the Sega Dreamcast's entire lifespan in the United States was 889 days. Nintendo basically kept riding the Wii at 250 until the wheels came off. The overall numbers are dramatically different this generation with the average cut coming very slowly, not being very big, and therefore the average daily cut rate being very small. The smallest yet. It was almost too quiet. So we finally made it to this generation. Generation 8. And I debated including this one. And you'll see why in a minute when we get to the asterisks. Again, we have just three systems this generation. And I didn't include the Switch here, but I will come back to that system before wrapping up. Now this generation is a lot fresher in our minds, so you can probably guess who had the most substantial cut here, right? Indeed, it was the Xbox One, but here's the asterisk we have to put here. This is the first time a system has dropped the price by taking something away, in this case the Kinect. And by removing that periphery, the Xbox One dropped its price less than 200 days after release and by 20%, taking the system from 500 down to 400. So yeah, it's a price cut and probably born out of some level of desperation to keep up with the PS4, but it's still not a pure cut like the others have been in this analysis. Next up is the Wii U. Although this is more than a little head-scratching, the system took over 300 days to drop by just 14%, from 350 down to 300. And I say head-scratching because the Wii U was selling so poorly from a relatively early time. And for that reason, I would expect to have seen a price cut come much faster and be much larger than 14%. It's as if Nintendo didn't care all that much or didn't feel the need to act desperately. Maybe they'd already mentally moved on to the Switch and didn't much care what happened to the Wii U. And finally, reflecting the system's success, the PlayStation 4 took nearly 700 days before a modest cut of 13%, taking the price from 400 down to 350. Things are a little more aggressive in the 8th generation than they were in the 7th, but not by much. The first cut coming around 400 days and being roughly the same size as the 7th generation cuts, giving an average daily cut rate of 0.04%. So speaking from a basic economic standpoint, with all of the generations represented here, you can clearly see how the fourth generation, and likely the accompanying profits, attracted more competition to the gaming hardware market for the following fifth generation, with some of that competition spilling over into generation six, and then thinning out as various competitors left the console market and things began to settle. In the language of economics, this is an industry with extremely high barriers to entry, and so I would expect things to stay this way for a little while longer. All right, enough with this generation stuff. Let's look at the overall system rankings. And remember, this ranking is established by calculating the daily percent cut rate for each system. So number 18, predictably with a daily percent cut rate of just 0.018% is the PlayStation 4. As we move up in the rankings, there's nothing too noteworthy until we get to number 14, the Wii U. Again, it's amazing to me that the Wii U, a system that struggled so much, should be so high up here. 
I would have expected it to be in the top 10 at least. We don't have to go too far to see our next point of interest. Number 12 is another surprise. The Jag should not be outside the top 10 here. Or even the top 5, at least in my opinion. I don't understand this. And maybe it's not to be understood. Let's keep going. The Dreamcast at number 10 seems a little high, like maybe they should have been more aggressive with their price cuts, but then again they were aggressive, but with the original pricing. $199.99 was a damn bargain for that machine, and $100 cheaper than the PlayStation 2 was at release. The PlayStation 3, TurboGrafx-16, and the Xbox One take up the next three spots and move us into the top six. Let's slow down a little now and be sure to drink these in. With a daily cut rate of 0.135, the PlayStation 1 is up high, and that's no surprise. Many from the fifth generation are in the top six. At number five with a cut rate of 0.139% is the GameCube from the competitive sixth generation. Number four with a high cut rate of 0.148% is the Nintendo 64, another from the fifth generation. Now this is a big one. At number three with a daily cut rate of 0.16%, drum roll please, it's the 3DO. I told you it wasn't the most substantial cut ever, but it is big. Number two with a daily cut rate of 0.175% is the Saturn. So four out of the top six are from the fifth generation. And by process of elimination, can you guess who number one is? With a daily cut rate higher than any other at 0.186%, is the original Xbox. This system's price cut was the most substantial in history, at least by this combined metric. And from the way things worked out, I would say it was a wise strategic decision for Microsoft to do that. It got them into the game, and they haven't left yet. Before we go, let's briefly touch on the Switch. As of the time of this video, the Switch is just over a year old. And based purely on the averages in this analysis, we might reasonably expect a price cut fairly soon. And we might also expect that price cut to knock about $75 off the price if it's consistent with the average. But those are just assumptions based on historic averages. And remember, the Wii's price didn't drop for over 1,000 days. Could Nintendo try and break that record? Who knows? This analysis was a lot of fun to put together. I hope you found it interesting. The format of my channel is to release stuff like this as often as I can. So please like and subscribe if you find this kind of thing engaging. And until next time, all the best and the sky is the limit.